Okay, you're probably saying another lecture. Yeah, another lecture. Um, well, I'm doing another lecture because I feel like in the last one, I kind of left you hanging a little bit of how to use table H. So this is going to be a little short, at least I hope to make it short, but it's tough when a tall guy like me makes videos. In any case, I want to look at table H a little bit and see how we use it and apply the concepts that I previously taught just to make sure that you totally understand, at least we have it, uh, you know, on a video to go back to, okay? So in any case, uh, this is lecture 1.16a, 1, uh, 1 we'll call it, okay? And let's get right to it. So table H is a table that tells us how liquids differ in terms of their vapor pressure. We learn vapor pressure as uh, essentially a word that describes the force due to liquid molecules escaping into the gas phase. Now, they're able to escape into the gas phase because they can overcome the attractive forces between themselves. They're called intermolecular attractions. So we learned in the last lecture that propanone has the weakest of those intermolecular attractions because it is able to vaporize the fastest and ethanoic acid is able to resist evaporating its vapor pressure or the force upward, okay, due to liquid molecules escaping is lower for ethanoic acid. So what does this tell us? These are individual vapor pressure curves. Vapor pressure is measured in kilopascal. It's a unit of pressure. We've talked about pressure as the force of molecules moving and, and colliding, a force over an area. And what we can get from this table is some uh, some interesting types of numbers. Now this dotted line across represents standard pressure and standard pressure is pressure at sea level, okay? And this is what most boiling points, melting points, and phase change temperatures are based upon, okay? So what we're going to say is when the pressure pushing down, and I'll redraw this a million times until we all See and get it. So we're going to see these black molecules, okay, are gas molecules already in the air, and haphazardly some of them collide with the surface, okay, of the water. And when the pressure is above, okay, the uh, pressure coming up, the vapor pressure, well, boiling has not occurred yet. Boiling, okay is when the pressures are equal. The atmospheric pressure pushing down is equal to the uh, vapor pressure pushing up. When these pressures are equal, you have boiling. Very important. So here's the trick. I could say to you, what's the boiling point of water? And you all probably run and say, well, it's 100. Well, that happens to be the normal boiling point. What does normal mean? That's the boiling point temperature when the pressure is standard. And we can read that temperature to be 100. But as I will show you soon, um, that temperature can be any temperature. For instance, if we have a pressure cooker, and there used to be pressure cookers back in the day when I was a kid, before they were microwaves, and what we'd have is a sealed pot with a real cast iron top, okay, that would be sealed and there'd be a pressure valve on the top. And what you would do is you take water and you put food in it and it, it would evaporate under higher temperatures that the pressure would increase. And what they were doing was by the pressure increasing, okay, think of this as atmospheric pressure now. I know it's says vapor pressure, but this is how we're going to read this chart. Let's just pretend that the atmospheric, the atmospheric pressure now is 200, which is at almost twice the standard normal pressure at sea level, which is 101.3. So at 200, Water would need a vapor pressure, if you read all the way down here, somewhere around here. So one, let's just make that 115 or one, something around 115. Uh, well, this is 105. This is 110, 115, something like 117, let's make it. So we're trying to read off this graph this far away is hard, but we can do that. So clearly, um, this is about a 117-ish number. So what we're saying is the temperature the water boils in a pressure cooker, if, it, if the pressure was doubled, it would boil at 117. All we did was take the pressure the atmospheric would be, and by the way, it's easy to say the atmosphere would be here because when the atmosphere pressure equals the vapor pressure, you've got boiling. So you read this chart that way. So what, uh, what would be the atmospheric pressure if water boils at 117? I look at my 117. 
I see where my line hits, and then I'm going to read across. And you would say, very simple. The atmospheric pressure would be 200 kilopascals, that's the unit, when water boils at 117. Very simple. Why does that work? That's because the atmospheric pressure pushing down on the liquid has to equal the vapor pressure. So if you're going to boil, these things would be equivalent. So I can work from, work from the both ends of the question. What would be the vapor pressure if water boiled at 117? And you would say 200. What would be the atmospheric pressure? 200. They have to be equal. Okay. So if it boils normally at 100, okay, if it normally boils at 100 with higher temperature, you create more vapor pressure. And that should make sense to you. Higher the temperature equals a greater amount of vapor pressure. Heck, more energy that you give molecules, the more they can overcome each other and increase their vapor pressure. So if I had water that was boiling and all of a sudden I increased the pressure on that liquid, it would stop boiling until I add what? Enough energy to change the temperature to 117, which at that point would increase the vapor pressure, which would now equal the new atmospheric pressure. Now, at the top of a mountain, as I talked about, there's less air. There's less air molecules on top of it. So the pressure is dropped on top of a mountain. So the pressure is dropped. Let's pretend now the pressure is, uh, I don't know. Let's pretend now it's um, the pressure, making a nice number for myself if you haven't noticed, is 30 kilopascals. Now, 30 kilopascals is about a uh, two-thirds lower than normal pressure. This would be on a way, way top. We're talking about Mount Everest type of pressure. Okay, really high um, amount of feet above sea level, but low pressure. Well, low pressure would mean that on my liquid, I don't have many much force on top of the liquid. Therefore, the molecules wouldn't need that much vapor pressure to over, they, they wouldn't need as high a vapor pressure as you would with a higher atmospheric pressure. And let me say this better. With a lower atmospheric pressure, in order to equal these forces, you would need a very high vapor pressure. Case in point, if the pressure pushing down is 30 kilopascals, I would only need 30 kilopascals of vapor pressure to go up to equal that. So my gosh, I don't need much heat in order to do that. So water would boil at 70 degrees if the atmospheric pressure was lowered two-thirds to 30 from 101.3. So it boils at 100 at 101.3, but if the pressure dropped to 30, okay, that curve drops here, the water boils at 30. So here's two questions I can give you. If water boils at 70, what's the atmospheric pressure? Hello. Okay, 30. And if the atmospheric pressure is 30, what would be the temperature it boil at? 70. You lower the force above the liquid, okay, it's easy to boil. So clearly, if I keep lowering the pressure and that force, okay, I'll do it like this, that force is lowered above a liquid, now it's going to be easier for the same temperature to boil, okay, because now the pressures are equalized, all right? So as the, the temperature, as the pressure drops, water boils at a low temperature. So think about it, if I was to throw water into space, water would immediately evapor vaporize with no pressure because nothing's keeping the water from escaping each other. So pressure is a huge, fa atmospheric pressure is a huge factor on what temperature something boils. So when you say water boils at 100, that's when the pressure is standard. And that's called normal boiling point. So if I put the normal in there, that's going to be the temperature when these curves hit this line. This line is when the what? Atmospheric pressure is 101.3, but it's also when the vapor pressure of that liquid is 101.3, which leads me to an interesting question. What is the vapor pressure of any liquid uh, at its normal boiling point? So at someone's normal boiling point, What must its vapor pressure be? Well, if it's normal, if it's boiling, the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. And if it's at normally, if it's a normal boiling point, the atmospheric pressure is, is um, 
0.3 kilopascal or any of the equivalents, and it must equal the vapor pressure. So the vapor pressure would be standard pressure. If it's boiling, that means these guys are equal, and normal means the, norm, the number here we're dealing with is at standard conditions. So no matter what liquid is, I can ask you, hey, off the top of your head, what's the vapor pressure of gasoline when it boils at its normal boiling temperature? You would say 101.3. Okay, so this graph is pretty simple, um, but it does show us a couple of different things, and I'll end with that. Okay, so it can tell us any point on this curve tells us the temperature it would boil if the atmospheric pressure is what we read here, which is, has to equal its vapor pressure if it's boiling. Only when they get to the dotted line is the boiling normal. Notice propanone gets it there faster, therefore its boiling point is much lower than, let's say, ethanoic acid in water who resist boiling. Okay, and why do they resist boiling? They've got stronger intermolecular attractions. All right, so interesting enough, higher pressure, higher boiling point, lower pressure, lower boiling point, and that needs to make sense to you. Okay, and it's all tied to the force keeping liquids from escaping, and it all has to do with the attractive forces, which you call intermolecular attractions. So I hope this little addition helped you out a little bit by looking at this graph. Okay, I'm done.